Do you want the best recorded voice for your podcast? Well, I'm going to give you three tips on how to get the best recorded voice for your podcast and how to select the best microphone for where you are today. I'm Marcos O'Rourke, and I am a radio broadcast engineer, and I've been in the industry for about 20 years. I've picked up a few things here and there, and I want to pass it on to you to help you get started on your journey. So let's not belabor the point. Let's get right to it. So here are the three tips on how to get the best recorded voice for your podcast. Tip number one, choose a microphone that is best for where you are now, not where you want to be, and we can, we'll get there eventually, but where you are now, there are many, 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 many different types of microphones from uh, the professional level microphones to USB microphones to shotgun microphones to lapel microphones, even microphones on your phone. There are many different microphones from $50 to $5,000 to $10,000 and, and even more than that. But finding what's best for you is what we're going to talk about. Right now, we are seeing an explosion of podcasts and of, of content, digital content. And we don't necessarily need to have the big budgets of like a major recording studio. No, 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 no. You could do it right at home. And choosing a microphone is the first step on how to get there. There are great options for home studios. The most basic is the microphone that's built into your laptop. That's right there. It is all ready to be used. It's not the best microphone. It sounds terrible. It sounds awful. It picks up all kinds of noise, not just uh, your environment noise, but it also picks up fan noise from the, the laptop, any clicking you may be doing. So well, let's try to avoid that. And uh, what else do we have? So then you move on to um, the next level of microphone. Do you have an iPhone? Do you have an Android? Those microphones are getting much, much better. And the microphone for your iPhone is pretty, pretty impressive. Let's, um, let's go into the Voice Memo app. So let me pull that up here, Voice Memos. So all I'm going to do is literally the built-in Voice Memo app for the iPhone. Hit record. It is now recording. So I am going to just hold it right here at about, you know, even with my mouth and just start talking. And this section is actually the audio that is coming from this microphone that is built in to your phone. So you're going to hear that this sounds pretty impressive. I mean, if I was in a pinch and I needed to record something in pretty good quality, Hey, it's right here. I have it on me, and it's going to do a good job. Now, there are drawbacks to the Voice Memo app in that it does what's called AGC. It does, it does leveling for you. It adjusts it. So quiet noises, it brings up the volume, and loud noises, it brings down the volume. It's not the best, and there are other apps out there that you could get that will not do that, and which lets you record it straight and, and without any compression or AGC or anything like that. But I'm showing you, at its basic, you've got a recorder right here on your phone. Now, if you want to step up your game a little bit, you can get a, an external microphone like this one. This is an, the Shure MV88. It's a little uh, cardioid uh, microphone. So now I've got it connected to my phone, and I'm using the app that is uh, built for this little microphone. It's made by Shure. And it's recording it in perfect quality, wave quality. There's no compression. There's no audio compression. There's no leveling. There's no limiting. So this is exactly how it sounds. I just have it right here in front of my mouth, and I'm recording. And this little section right here is going to be how it sounds using this little microphone. So now let's go back to the laptop or the computer option. There are different options that you could do for there. So your first option that you could do is a USB microphone. There are lots of USB microphones out there. And some of them are 
pretty doggone good. For example, the one that I really like is the Apogee Mic Plus, and it is a USB mic made by Apogee, and it is really, really impressive. I've used it to record audiobooks, I've used it to record commercials, to record promos, all kinds of things that I've done with that microphone in my recording studio, which I'll talk about here in a minute, at home. Another option is the Rode Video NTG, and that's my shotgun microphone that I'm using for the video, and that can be used as a the eighth inch connector for video, or I can connect it by USB to my computer or laptop and use that to record into software, and it will sound pretty good. Slightly behind, slightly less as good as the Apogee Mic Plus, but it's still, it is very, very good, and it has dual use for video and for audio. Now, both of these USB microphones will run you about $250. That's kind of where your entry of really good USB mics are. There are less expensive ones out there, and anything is going to be better than the built-in mic on your laptop. So, let's just say that. Now, if you want to move into the more pro level and start looking at bigger microphones like this one, this is the Electro Voice RE20. This has been the workhorse of the broadcast industry for 50 years maybe. I, I don't know the actual history of the RE20, but I know it is a long history. So I'm recording this section of this video with the RE20, and you're hearing how that sounds right now. And this is how the RE20 is going to sound. It's going to have a, a more quieter sound. So as you start getting into more pro-level microphones and more expensive-level microphones, um, you're going to need more pieces of equipment. To be able to use this microphone on your computer, you're going to need an audio interface, something like an Apogee Duet or a Focusrite Scarlett. There are different interfaces out there, but those are kind of the two ones that I've had experience with and really trust. So what I'm doing though right now is I'm actually recording this mic into a little SD recorder, a Tascam DR40. It's okay, it's, it's a recorder, it's not the best recorder, but it's what I have on hand. And so that's gonna be pulled off of an SD card and put into this video after the fact. Now, the RE20, uh, you're starting to look at maybe three, $400 for a microphone, $500 in some cases, and you, know, you could go into like an Audio-Technica 4050. That is a wonderful microphone. Now you're looking at $700. A Neumann U89, now you're looking at like $1,200 for that microphone. So as you start getting up into these more pro-level microphones, it's going to start, your cost is going to really start climbing. Now this is where I kind of need to take a break. We're going to get a little technical here now. So let's talk about microphone types. There's a couple of basic types of microphones. You have dynamic, and you have condenser. A dynamic microphone, like this one, doesn't need any power. It can basically run itself. A condenser microphone needs what's called phantom power, and that's power that's provided by the device, like the recorder can provide phantom power, or the computer can provide phantom power, or a, a mixer can provide phantom power. So, it's a little bit of a difference. Now, as far as how it captures your voice, a dynamic microphone is going to generally sound a little duller, but it's going to reject more noise from your environment. It's going to be very focused in this area. A condenser microphone is going to give you a more natural sound. It's going to basically reproduce your voice a little bit more faithfully than a dynamic microphone. But the drawback of a condenser microphone is that it picks up everything. So if I'm, if I switch to the Apogee right now, that is a condenser microphone. You're going to hear, since I'm up in my office recording this, you're going to hear the traffic outside and somebody closing doors in the hallway or as I move my clothes rustling. So it's, it's a lot more 
sensitive, if you will, than a dynamic microphone is. Tip number two, create a quiet space to record. A lot of people talk about making a recording space and they say, oh, I need to soundproof my space. Well, soundproofing is not what you think it is. Soundproofing technically is building a space where it prevents sound from coming in or getting out, basically. So you're isolating your space from the outside. Now that could be very, very, very expensive in that you have to build, if you're building a room, you build two walls and you have special bumpers that connect the drywall to the studs and then you have foam and then you have to raise your floor and oh my gosh, it's it can get really, really expensive. You could even get what are, what are called whisper rooms and those are little booths that you can construct and they will provide that isolation. But even those things are expensive. I mean, we're talking $5,000 to get one of the smaller whisper rooms. So what you really need to worry about when you are uh, looking to create a quiet space is sound treatment. Now, you may have been in a recording studio or a radio studio, and you've seen the foam panels on the wall. Well, those are there to diffuse the sound. It's not to block the sound, it's to diffuse it. Think about your bathroom. Okay, when you are looking at the bathroom mirror, you see a perfect reflection of you. That's because all the light that's going into the mirror is being perfectly reflected back. Now, if you were to put a sheet in front of that mirror, you're not going to see yourself because the light is diffused by the sheet. Sloppy analogy, I know, but you kind of get the idea. When you go into the shower and you sing, it's echoey in there because it's hard, flat surfaces that's reflecting the sound all over the place. When you climb into bed and put the covers over your head, it's quieter because the sound is being diffused. So that's what you want to get to. That's what kind of a space you want to build is a, is a space where the sound is diffused. I have a recording space, recording studio, in my house, which is my closet. It is a tiny, tiny, tiny walk-in closet that uh, I have clothes on two sides. And behind me, I just bought some RLX foam from Amazon. I'll link it down below, but some foam behind me and put that around, you know, head height where I'm standing and sitting. And then above me on the ceiling, I have carpet down below. And there we go. I basically have a pretty decent recording studio. I've recorded books in there. I've recorded commercials in there. I've gotten paid a lot of money to record in my closet. So don't discount the spaces that you have. Um, even your car. Your car is a quiet place. Um, build yourself a little fort in your bed. Put the comforters over your head. Build yourself a little pillow fortress and, and bring your microphone in there. All these different places are where you can diffuse that sound and bring that, that, that background noise down and, and reduce the echoes that you may hear. So one of the things that I try to do in my recording studio, my closet at home, is to keep my noise floor below negative 60 dBFS. Now, negative 60 is kind of the generally accepted uh, voiceover standard for your noise floor. And we'll talk about noise floor here in a bit, but by diffusing all that sound, you're lowering that, and sounds that do come in from the outside will not bounce around in there. They'll hit a diffusion and scatter. So it'll sound quieter, and it'll bring that noise floor down. And we'll talk about noise floor here shortly. Tip number three. Treat your microphone like an instrument. You wouldn't play a violin with drumsticks. Well, I guess you could, and... You just wouldn't get the sound that you're expecting from a violin. So, the same way, treat your microphone like an instrument. Learn how to play this instrument. There are so many ways that you can use a microphone to get sound. For example, and I'm going to switch to this microphone real quick. If you get up close, you can get that really intimate sound and get down and quiet. And this is 
you're almost like speaking into your listener's ear. Or if you back up, you could really kind of project and you could get all that energy that you have and really project and it's going to pick it up. So being able to use that microphone and learn how to do it is very important. Microphones, uh, dynamic microphones especially, have what's called bass effect. As you get closer, the bass in your voice is more accentuated. As you get farther, the bass is reduced. It's not all about the bass. No matter what the song says, recording your voice needs to be clear. And so if you put a lot of bass into your voice, you're not going to leave any room for the important frequencies in your voice to get through. So your, your overall sound will be quieter and not loud and crisp and present, and that's what you want to hear. You want to cut through the noise of your listener's environment so that way they hear your message. So let's talk about how your microphone picks up sound. So when you talk, your, the bass from your voice travels through your bones into your ear. So what you hear in your head is bassier than what your listener is going to hear or people that you talk to hear. So you have to keep that in mind when you play back what you record, that it's not going to be exactly what you hear. So just keep that in mind. Now, positioning and distancing are very important. Let's start with distancing. How far away from the mic should you be? Using this microphone as an example, I always say you want to be three to six inches away from the microphone. So you could be a fist to a hang loose away from the microphone. And within that range, you will basically be able to pick up the majority of your voice uh, without sounding overly bassy and without sounding overly thin by being too far away. The second part of that is positioning. If you're positioned straight on with the microphone, every time you say a P or you perhaps pontificate on something pretty important, you hear all those pops, That's those are called plosives. And that is formed when you say a P sound, that wall of air comes out and hits the capsule of the microphone and it sounds like a little explosion. So what you wanna do is go about 45 degrees off axis. So about 45 degrees away from the front of your mouth. So that way all those plosives miss the microphone. But you're still within that three to six inches. And so you're able to get a good sound, get good levels, but not have those plosives hit your microphone. There's windscreens you could get. There are wind diffusions you could get. Those are great, but you still need to position off access of the microphone because I have had plenty of times where a plosive made it through the foam or made it through the, the disc of nylon, you know, the, the sheer nylon. So off access, three to six inches away, and you are golden. Okay, I only have a couple of minutes left, so here are a couple of little technical trivias. I told you we would come back to noise floor, DBFS. We got a few other things here to talk about. So, I said earlier, I want to keep my noise floor below minus 60 DBFS. Sound is measured in decibels, that's the dB. Full scale is FS, so minus 60 DBFS is my noise floor, my average sound level of my room or my recording is 60 decibels below full scale. Full scale nowadays with digital recording is zero. And if you go above zero, you clip, you distort. It sounds awful. You don't want to do that. So 60 dB is where your noise floor is, but you don't want your voice to be way down there in the dirt because as you bring it up, that noise floor also is going to come up. So this is where the term signal to noise comes in handy. So you have your noise and then you have your signal. So you want to have as much signal as you can without clipping. So that way you don't hear that noise floor. So your signal to noise, the greater the separation, the better. Just make sure you don't clip on the top end. 
So thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. I hope this gives you some, uh, some guidance, some direction on choosing a microphone and creating yourself a little space to uh, record your podcast. Um, comment down below. I can't wait to hear what you do and how you use this information to record your podcast. And if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments. Give me a thumbs up, hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you would like to see more of this content or if you would like to see some of the other content that I have. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy.